Hi guys, this is Ola from Cat Pond, and you're welcome to this new exercise video for Fusion 360 beginner users. Well, the only thing I have to say is for you to download the drawing file, you have a card showing at the top right corner of your screen, so you can do well to click on it and get yourself the exercise drawing page. And with that said, let's get into the exercise proper. Alright, so I guess you already have the drawing file for this exercise and so it seems to look like a single body. Um, the approach I'm going to use <laughs> is going to seem a little bit weird, but anyways, I just want you to know at the beginning that um, when I do stuff like this, my agenda is to have as little um, models here or features like I always say. So with that said, I'm going to approach this right now. I begin to create my sketch on this top plane. And um, so what I'll do is I'll draw a circle here. I'll draw another. <laughs> I'll pick up my line to draw something that goes this way, this way, this way, this way, and here. I'm going to assume that um, for you, you might not, well, I think everybody should have the same approach generally. So let me not make some weird assumptions. So I'll place tangential constraints between this and dimension this um, sketch profile um, adequately to fit as though we are looking at the drawing from the top view. This is going to be 10 in diameter and this is going to be 30. It's radius 15 which means it's 30 in diameter. Um, because I like my things to look neat, I'll just try to arrange it a little. Alright, then from here to here should be 74. It's going to mess up this um, drawing right now, I suppose. Yeah, just like I suspected. I'll drag this inside yeah, to make it change its ways. And let's see. I place dimension here again. The distance from this point to this line is 43. The distance from this line to this line or this point is 37. Okay, so there are still some things which are kind of missing. All right, so the distance here is 10. And lastly, I would say that these two lines are equal to each other. Now our sketch is fully defined. I can finish this sketch. What I'm going to do is to create an extrusion and it's going to be in this way. The overall distance for this extrusion is to be 76 millimeters. So I'll do it this way and say OK. All right. Next, what I'll do is, it's kind of weird, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to create a drawing again on this, uh, where is that plane? Let me hide these bodies on, sorry. Yeah, on this plane. So um, it's facing the body in this manner. All right, so in the right view, I'm going to create some sketches. What I'll do is, um, first of all, I'll create a center line to begin from, let's say, I'll just draw a center line this way. I guess it's best. All right. The distance between this center line and the base point. Um, no. <laughs> um, let's see. The distance between this point and the center line. Ah. It's not what I want, but well, no problem. So I'll make this 76. In essence, what I want is I simply want this to be at the center of 76, which is 38. Um, but I guess because I'm using center line, that's the reason why it's having that issue. So if I delete the dimension and redo this from here to here, it should give us 38. Yeah. 
So I guess I'll use 38 because it's easier to understand. And then I can change this back to a center line. All right. The next step will be for me to create some extra drawings. So I would create something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. With this, uh, my next step, I would do something. I will create a an intersection with this line or with this face. Uh, make it a construction um, object, and I guess that's all. So what I'm doing is I'm actually creating these um, the external parts that seem to extrude out of the green um, component of body. And um, my reason for doing this, like I said, is always to try and reduce the number of um, instances or let me not call it instances, the number of features that are used in the overall design. So the first thing I'll do is I'll make this um, overall dimension between these two um, to be 145. All right, so I guess at this point, I'll place some constraints. This should be vertical. Um, this should be horizontal. All right, so that's 145. Next, I'll place other dimensions. And for me to do that, we're going to make some assumptions, actually, because the drawing is definitely not um, properly arranged or defined and some sort like that so between this and this we're going to assume that it would be 105 yeah so it is 105 not an assumption um is it this two that's 145 oh no that's a mistake. Between this line and this line is 105. 105. The dimensions are not fully available, so it's kind of confusing to be honest. Um, I'll delete this. If that's 64, so um, let's just say this is here. Okay, so what dimension should we make this? Um, I don't know. Let's make this from there to here. Let's just give it to be about 80. <laughs> All right, so now I understand what I'm doing wrong. This would be 135 based on an assumption. And then this would be 105. Yeah, now it makes better sense. And then um, the rest of the dimensions we need um, we have a radius of 17.15 for this. So this would be 17.15 or 0.5, sorry. All right, I'll drag this upwards. Let's see, I'll take this also upwards. And um, this would be... Twenty one from here to this line. Is going to be sixty. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so now um let me see how to set this to be arranged properly. Okay, so this is what we have. And then the last thing for us to do, I'll place a coincident constraint between this construction line created and this line of our drawing or the point here. So at this point, we have that everything is in black. And then our next thing to do is going to be to create um, a chamfer. So um, for this chamfer, we do not quite have um, the distance or how it should be in the drawing. Um, so what we're going to do is I'll go to equal distance and just assume that um, the distance for this is about 
3.5 is an assumption so but we we'll use that because we do not have it in the drawing so say okay and that's 3.5 and voila we we'll finish our sketch in a symmetric view and go over to revolve 2 we we'll create this revolution and make it fixed with this i would say okay so so far we've done just two features which is the extrusion and then this revolve and then lastly we're going to do another thing um we'll create a new sketch here and for this new sketch we're going to create again a construction line and we want it to originate from the center of this well just do something like this okay dimension between these two points we have it to be 38 okay next we create a rough sketch that goes in this manner one two three Okay, um, this way and stop. And then we also have a sketch that comes this way, down, this way, up. <laughs> and lastly, another that comes this way, sideways, down, this way, and up. So basically, what it requires is just for you to have, I would say, proper understanding of the um, model and to find with yourself the simplest way to achieve it. All right. And the thing is that since you have full autonomy or full rights to do whatever you want, um, the software cannot tell you that, no, it cannot be done in this manner. <laughs> So that's the reason why I do my stuff like this, basically. All right, so um, what I'll do first of all is to dimension between these two points, and this would be 10. Okay, next I'll create the same dimensions here, one, two, this would be 10. I place a symmetry constraint between this line, this line, and our center line. So this is done. This um, extra part could be as long as whatever. All right, I place my dimensions again. We know that the distance between this line and this point, which is a cut we have on our drawing, is 64. So I'll do this. And um, the distance from the center point to where the cut begins is 7.5 so I'll say from this line to this is 7.5 all right next I'll try to place a collinear constraint between this line and this it's not that it actually makes any difference to be honest so I could um, undo that it doesn't really matter where this goes um, I place the rest of my constraints. Um, this is going to be 52. So um, what to we'll do is from this point to this, I'm going to call this 52. All right, I place a symmetry constraint between this, this, and the center line. That's good. And um, I'll place a collinear co constraint between this and this. Same also this and this. All right. So at this point, we basically have um, all that we need. The rest of this, um, this parts, the extensions for all this does not really matter anymore um, for this particular project. So when I finish the sketch, I go over to extrude i select on these three profiles one two three i want them to go symmetric in all and i want it to be a cut 
so from doing all of this now and i would say okay this is what we have so we followed um, just a very few procedures and processes in designing these but as you can see we have few features here and yet we have the um, components that we intended to have um, and just like i've always said the whole idea is you try to get as little as possible for the features you have below and um, the purpose for all this is because um, basically if you have more components or complex assemblies to join together um, the longer the feature tree here or the timeline um, the more it's going to take for your assembly to be able to compute each of the features when you make it a change or modification to one of those components all right so um looking at this i think we did uh, make a slight mistake somewhere and i suppose it's gonna have to be with this particular one so i'd say edit this sketch um 105 is this entire distance right and then the distance here is 64. um okay well generally i think i'm not gonna bother myself <laughs> because the dimensions are not fully given so we're gonna end with this and i hope that you guys have enjoyed this particular one and if you have um, anything to say contributions to make or suggestions i would strongly um recommend that you please place that in the comment section and i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can thank you guys for sticking around to the end do not forget to subscribe to this channel click on the notification bell so you get updated when i make new uploads and also click on the like button if you think that you enjoyed this and you learned something from it all right, guys, see you in the next video.